Alright, what is up guys? Today is Saturday, January 13th, 2018, and today I have Floor System Test 40 for you guys. I'm very excited about this one, so I hope you will enjoy it. A couple things before I get started though. First of all, if you guys hear any noise in the background, uh, my dad has the stereo turned on pretty loud downstairs, so I'm not sure if that will be picked up by my phone, but if it is, I apologize for that little disturbance in the background. You know, you might hear a little bit of uh, bass here and there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, and the second thing before I get started is I have an update to share with you on the Simplex 4005, which isn't good, but it also isn't necessarily horrible. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the panel here and uh, show you guys what's going on with it. Now, uh, ever since I got this panel, it's had a trouble on it, which uh, I haven't really been too concerned about. But uh, I actually looked into it a little bit this week and uh, found out what it is. Right now I have two troubles on it. I got the battery trouble. I'll go into that in just a second because we uh, actually do have batteries plugged in. So that's, this may clear in a little while. But um, I do have a ground fault on this panel. And originally I thought, when I, uh, I thought the ground fault was being caused because I don't have an earth wire plugged in down here. I thought I had to get a three-prong... Uh, power cable with the green wire and plug that into the earth terminal and that would clear my trouble but uh, someone got on in my YouTube comments a couple times and said having the earth wire plugged in down there uh, doesn't have anything to do with the ground fault and uh, like I said I'm I'm very uh, somewhat uneducated with this stuff so I, I really uh, didn't know so I, I figured it'd be something to look into so I got on the forums this week and Went back and forth with the retired Simplex technician on there, and uh, he he's always been a big help to me, especially with this panel. So I uh, talked to him a lot about this, this ground fault issue that I'm having and how I wanted to get it cleared. And uh, in case you guys don't know, um, for those of you who didn't follow the 4005 update series I was doing, uh, very quickly when I got this panel in 2015, everything on it was fried. Uh, except for what I thought to be the power supply and the DACT card. Uh, I had a, a chip blown out on the CPU, a chip blown out on the power distribution module, and all the I.O. cards I got with the panel either had something blown out on them or they were missing components because those components were broken off during shipping because the idiot who sent me this panel didn't package uh, anything. You know, everything was just floating around freely inside the panel. So this panel uh, did have previous damage to it, uh, possibly a um, lightning strike, which uh, blew out nearly everything on this panel. Um, and I replaced all the electronic components on this. I spent quite a lot of money replacing everything, CPU, power distribution module. These cards are both new. I uh, got these off of eBay used, but I had to get those. And... Um, the only thing, the, the only two electronic components that are original to this panel are the DACT car, which if this is bad, I really don't care because I'm not, I'm not tying this thing to uh, a call 911. I'm not tying this into the city or anything like that, so into the phone line. Uh, and then the power supply, I, uh, I never really suspected anything was wrong with it because, you know, power was flowing uh, through it, and it was getting to the CPU and everything, so I, I've always figured there was nothing wrong with it. But, uh, this week I finally did learn that, um, there actually is something wrong with it, and, uh, like I said, it has, this ground fault I have here has nothing to do with this. It turns out, and I, um, learned about this from the Simplex technician, there are actually two different grounds on this panel. Having that earth wire plugged in, uh, just protects the system if for some reason the 120 volts AC gets uh, grounded to the cabinet and someone goes to touch it they can't get shocked it'll trip a fuse or um, the breaker or something like that in the breaker panel but the panel doesn't sense for this earth wire at all so it doesn't matter if I have that plugged in uh, what I do have is a real internal ground fault somewhere in the system and uh, I went through everything it's not on the CPU, it's in. It's not in the NAC relay card. I've told those are two places where it can be. Um, you know, I didn't think it was in the CPU because I uh, bought this off eBay used, and the seller said it was in perfect working shape, which it is. So, uh, but I, 
I've been doing a lot of experimenting this week, and uh, the technician has been walking me through a lot of uh, a lot of helpful troubleshooting steps. But um, after doing a lot of stuff, we finally uh, did narrow it down to I have something wrong with my power supply. So I ended up pulling the power supply board off and inspecting everything on it. There didn't look to be anything anything wrong, but um, <coughs> after I I did some testing with the um, the voltmeter and stuff like that, and some other uh, tests. Um, I did find out that uh, there is something wrong with this power supply, and like I said, that's not a huge deal. It's a little bit disappointing to hear that, but at the same time, it it doesn't surprise me, being that the rest of this panel was uh, fried. It doesn't surprise me that this power supply didn't escape damage. Um, so it does have some damage to it, but you know. Uh, I, I'm not sure where it is, and obviously it's 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 not hindering the operation of the system too much. I would like to get this power supply replaced at some point, but the other thing is that it's an incredibly expensive part. On eBay, it is uh, even used on eBay, it is $400, which that is absolutely uh, absurd, and I will not be spending that much to get this power supply, power supply replaced just to clear a stupid trouble. So if you guys know of any 4005s that are being parted out, anything, any panels that are have been pulled out of service because something else went bad with them or whatever, and they have a good power supply, uh, feel free to contact me, and I will gladly uh, buy it off of you for under $400, preferably. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so the ground fault will persist until I get a uh, new power supply, but like I said, it's no big deal. This isn't being used as a life safety system, so I'm not concerned about it. So, uh, with that being said, um, I do have one more trouble on this panel, which is the battery trouble. Um, I set the time and date, so that's all good. But um, I did finally plug in my batteries. As you guys can see, we have two uh, two wires coming out of the the battery terminal. I finally have my two uh, tw uh, 12 volt, 33 amp hour batteries, which are sitting over here, plugged in. I'm honestly not sure if these things are going to do anything. They've been plugged into the panel charging for about uh, two or three hours now, and uh, I still have the battery trouble. So the technician told me that the trouble uh, will persist until they're uh, charged up. Uh, he said the battery trouble can be caused, the, the battery connected trouble can be caused by um, the batteries being depleted, which these things are pretty much completely dead. For one thing, they're from 2006. They came off of the uh, the uh, 4100 system at my dad's work uh, because they were replaced by new batteries. And uh, furthermore, I haven't had them on the charger for two years. I think the last time they were on the charger was when I had them plugged into the, the Firelight MS2, which is long gone. Um, but anyway... Uh, uh, the point I'm trying to make is that because they're so old and because they've been sitting pretty much dead for two years, I have no clue if they will charge up. They may not take a charge at all, and if that's the case, I'm just going to have to toss them, you know. But I'm just going to leave them plugged in for a few more hours here and see what they do, see if uh, the uh, battery connected changes to a low battery trouble and eventually it goes away. We'll have to see about that. But anyway, I do have my batteries plugged in, so maybe by the next test uh, that will be gone that battery trouble. Um, while we're in the panel, I I have made a couple changes to this system this week. And uh, we have a couple new wires. As you guys can see, um, on my NAC relay card, uh, I have two of these are set up as NACs. This is my audible circuit, this is my visible circuit, and then these two are just open um, relays that I was going to use for uh, a fire alarm condition. The bottom one isn't being used, but I have wires plugged into the third circuit here. And uh, you guys will have to see what that's for in a couple minutes. I'm not going to tell you guys what that's for. I have wires coming out of that relay and uh, 24 volts coming out of the power distribution module hooked into that relay. So you guys are going to have to see what that is in a couple minutes. As far as the devices go for this test, I have uh, the same pole station as the last test. Uh, my Simplex uh, 2099-9756 uh, dual action T-bar. And also, a Simplex True Alert. Now some of you may be saying that this looks like the device I had in my last test. Which it does. So some of you may think it's my Simplex 4906-9134 chime strobe. But, 
the 9134 is sitting right here. So, what did I get? I will tell you right now, this is not a True Alert horn strobe. This is not your, this is not your average True Alert horn strobe. This is something a little bit special, and uh, you guys will just have to see what it is in a couple minutes here. So anyway, uh, everything else is the same. I still have the SmartSync module because that is needed to run this SmartSync True Alert. Um, and, uh, the pole station's on zone one, as it always is. I'm not using any of the other zones. And uh, obviously with the sync module, we have, uh, we're have we gonna have um, audible silence, no surprise there, uh, over two wires. So anyway, I think I'm done rambling. I've been rambling for 10 flipping minutes, so. Anyway, I think it's about time to get started with this test. So, like I said, this is going to be a good one. So, I'm just going to go ahead and pull it, and uh, I think that's all there is to say. So anyway, here we go. Three, two, one. All right, there you guys go. So what the heck is this thing? This is a Simplex True Alert 4906-9138 multi-tone horn strobe. And um, along with the um, True Alert chime strobes, this thing was released sometime in 2010. And uh, so it's only about eight years old right now. But uh, I ended up finding this thing really cheap on eBay for like 30 bucks. So uh, I'm actually, as far as I know, I'm the first one on YouTube to have one of these. Um, the SDX has um, has one of these, but it's the red version and it's just the horn. It doesn't have the strobe on it. And that one is in the 4901 series. Um, what I was just using was the 500 Hertz horn, which I think sounds pretty good. You know, uh, that is something I could see being used in a building, but... It's got the other tones that sound just like the Wheelock MT, the bell, the high-low, and everything like that. Anyway, I finally got my hands on one of these. I've, I've wanted one for a long time, so finally picked one up, and, uh, you know, it's it's not every day you see one of those pop up on eBay. And what I pretty much go on to eBay and do is search those part numbers directly, and I end up, in this case, I ended up coming up with something, so. But uh, anyway, there's that. The other change... I made with this system is that you guys can see I finally have my enunciator panels wired in. <coughs> so the Simplex 4305-B, which came out of the uh, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank Office Building Demolition last year, <coughs> um, I got the Zone 1 light wired up on that, and on the Cerberus Powertronics panel from my dad's work, I have the uh, Zone 1 LED wired up on that. So they're basically just tied together in the back of the panel, and uh, I have them running into the third alarm relay circuit down there and uh, uh, these are just uh, the technician also told me these are just dry relay circuits they don't have power coming out of them like the 4004 so I, he had to help me uh, figure that out so that's why I have to have the 24 volts coming from the power distribution up here but anyway there's all that stuff and uh, these will stay on until I reset it and uh I could have wired up a few more of these lights. I just wanted to simplify it. You know, I just wanted to make it as easy as I could to wire up. And uh, really, this does make sense because the only zone I have that could go into alarm is zone one. So, but this is configured to, these are configured to turn on whenever I, uh, whenever the system goes into alarm for whatever reason. But I think it looks pretty cool, you know. Um, it's, it's been a long time since I've, uh, lit this panel up in any way so uh these are incandescent bulbs back here and then this is an led so anyway uh i reset the pole station i'm gonna go ahead and put a reset in the system and uh i just thank you guys for watching this i was really excited about this test like i said when i found that uh that multi-tone horn strobe on ebay for only 30 bucks i knew i hit gold right there so and uh maybe i'll do an individual video with it uh, just like I did the 9134 
chime stro maybe i'll do an individual video of it showing all the tones it does and everything like that but um anyway the video's gone to be 16 minutes so i'm gonna let the system reset and then we'll go ahead and end the video <coughs> All right, there it goes. So uh, anyway, I thank you guys very much for watching today. Hope you enjoyed, and that will be it.